How does Tesla's supercharging network compare with Ionity in Europe and Electrify America here in the United States? I'm Jonathan Stewart, and welcome to CleanerWatt. Electric vehicle charging networks are really important for the adoption of electric vehicles. Those who do not drive electric vehicles often mark the lack of an EV charging infrastructure as a reason why they don't own an EV. Most people do charge at home, but if you want to drive long distances, a robust charging network is necessary. In this video, we're going to be comparing Tesla to Electrify America and Ionity, and we're going to be comparing them by availability, charging power, charging cost, and convenience. Since Tesla has chargers in both Europe and the United States, as well as other parts of the world, I thought it would be a better comparison if we used both of these networks and compared them to Tesla's network. So if you take a look at these companies side by side, you see that Tesla has 1,870 charging locations, Electrify America has 425, and Ionity has around 227. Tesla has 16,585 individual plugs, Electrify America has 1,980, and Ionity has 923. As you can see, Tesla has considerably more charging locations and considerably more charging plugs, but on top of all that, this gives them more chargers per location. As you can see from this chart, Tesla has on average 8.9 chargers per location, where Electrify America only has 4.7 and Ionity averages right around 4 chargers per location. If you look at these charging locations by region, you can see that in North America, Tesla has 914 locations, Electrify America has 425, and of course, Ionity doesn't have any. In Europe, Tesla has 527 locations, Electrify America doesn't have any, and Ionity has 227 locations. Tesla also has supercharging stations throughout other parts of the world, including China with 277 locations there. One side note that I'd like to mention right now that I did not include in these calculations is the fact that Tesla has a large number of destination chargers that can be found throughout the world at different locations like restaurants, hotels, and other attractions. According to an Electrek article that talked about Porsche copying Tesla's destination charging model, quote, the automaker meaning Tesla, has deployed close to 20,000 charging stations at almost 4,000 locations around the world under its destination charging network. So these destination chargers are level 2 chargers, they're not fast chargers, but they are free of charge when you go to these different locations. If you add these numbers to Tesla's charging network, it becomes even more impressive. So as we've shown, Tesla has a lot better coverage for both the United States and Europe, but when we actually talk about charging speed and charging power, how does Tesla compare to these other two networks? One of the biggest factors that determines how fast you can charge your EV is the output power of the charger. Out of Electrify America's 1980 plugs, 96 of those are level 2, meaning they have less than 20 kilowatts of power output. They also have 425 of their chargers, which are the Chatamo chargers that only go up to 50 kilowatts. Tesla has around 144 of their chargers that are called urban superchargers, and they only charge up to 72 kilowatts. So if you take the charging locations out of the mix that are less than 120 kilowatts of charging output, you see that Tesla still has 16,441 locations that are either 120 kilowatts or greater in charging power. That takes Electrify America's network down to 1,459, and all of Ionity's chargers are above those speeds. So the reason I've broken this down in this way is because somewhere around 150 kilowatts for most EVs is where the magic really happens, and EVs become very convenient for long-distance travel. Let's talk about the actual charging times that correspond with these different outputs that we've talked about, 50 kilowatts, level two, and then of course DC fast chargers, 120 plus kilowatts. So for this comparison, I pulled data from evdatabase.com and we're comparing these vehicles, the Model Y, the Audi e-tron, and the Jaguar I-Pace, and we're talking about how long it takes them to get from 10% state of charge to an 80% state of charge, and we'll also talk about how many miles and how many kilometers were added in these comparisons. If you charge the Tesla Model Y from 10% to an 80% state of charge, you gain 221 miles or 356 kilometers. 
If you charge the e-tron from 10% to 80%, you get 143 miles or 230 added kilometers, and the iPACE gains 164 miles or 264 kilometers. Level 2 charging is totally fine for home, but it's not good for travel. As you can see from this chart, it would take 7 plus hours to charge your Model Y on a Level 2 system from 10 to 80% state of charge. It would take the e-tron over 9 hours and the iPACE over 13 hours. Once you move up to a 50 kilowatt charger, it takes 72 minutes to do that same charge on the Model Y, 74 minutes on the e-tron, and 75 minutes on the iPACE. As I mentioned before, where EVs really become convenient is when you can hit speeds of around 150 kilowatts for charging. That brings the charging time for the Model Y down to 31 minutes, the e-tron to 25 minutes, and the iPACE to 44 minutes. The Model Y is the only vehicle on this list that can take advantage of charging output rates of up to 250 kilowatts. And if you connect a Model Y to the V3 charging network, you should be able to charge from 10% to 80% in around 22 minutes. The e-tron is only able to charge up to 150 kilowatts and the iPACE is only able to charge up to 104 kilowatts. Something that's really important to mention when we're talking about EV charging and charge times is the fact that the output of a charger connected to your EV is not going to be constant. If you connect the Tesla Model Y to a V3 supercharger that has outputs of up to 250 kilowatts, you'll actually see that the numbers may peak at one point at 250 kilowatts, but that number will gradually go down until it's a very slow charge at the end of the cycle. Here's a chart from evdatabase.org that shows the charging curve for a Tesla Model 3 long range all wheel drive vehicle. As you can see from this chart, once you get around a 50% state of charge, the charging output starts going down until you get to a pretty low rate there at the end of the charge. The battery management system that's built into every EV is what controls how much charge can be inputted into the vehicle's battery. It ramps it down near the end of the cycle because that helps protect the battery against excess heat and also making sure that some of the cells don't overcharge and damage those cells. So here's a chart from evdatabase.org looking at the Tesla Model Y long range all wheel drive vehicle connected to different speeds of chargers. And as you can see there, it not only has the max power, but it also has the average power. And you can see there if you connect the Tesla Model Y to a V3 supercharger, which has a max power of 250 kilowatts, the average that you actually get is somewhere around 165 kilowatts throughout the entire cycle. If you take a look at the same exact information for the Porsche Taycan Turbo, which can take up to 270 kilowatts of charging power, you can see that even when connected at the max charge rate, the average power during that charging cycle is 175 kilowatts. Another really important factor to consider is how much does it cost to charge your vehicle at each one of these charging network locations. So at Tesla's supercharging locations in the United States, it costs around 26 cents per kilowatt hour to charge your vehicle. In the UK, Tesla charges around 24 pence per kilowatt hour. And in the EU, it varies by country. Tesla charges somewhere around 24 European cents to around 33 European cents in countries like Germany. In the UK, the Ionity network charges 69 pence per kilowatt hour, and in the EU, they charge 79 euro cents per kilowatt hour. Whereas Tesla and Ionity charge you per kilowatt hour, Electrify America charges you based on how much output your vehicle can receive and how many minutes you charge. So if you look at this chart, you can see that in California, Oregon, Utah, Nevada, Maine, New Jersey, and a few other states, if your max charge rate does not exceed 75 kilowatts, you are charged 25 cents per minute. If you exceed 75 kilowatts but do not exceed 125 kilowatts, you're charged 69 cents per minute. And if you exceed 125 kilowatts and go up to the max 350 kilowatts, you're charged 99 cents per minute. In other parts of the nation, these rates are lower, as you can see there at the first tier, 21 cents per minute, at the second tier, 58 cents per minute, and at the third tier, 89 cents per minute. On top of all this, Electrify America charges a $1 session fee. To give a clear illustration of the cost difference between these networks, we're going to be comparing how much it costs to charge the Model Y, the e-tron, and the iPACE at each of these locations from a 10% state of charge to an 80% state of charge. 
At a Tesla supercharging station, the Model Y can charge from a 10% state of charge to an 80% state of charge for about $13.47. That comes out also to around six cents per mile. To achieve the same amount of charge at the Electrify America network, it would cost somewhere around $20.58 or $22.78 in the more expensive states. If you charge the e-tron from a 10% to 80% state of charge at Electrify America, you can see that it will cost you between $23.25 to $25.75 or between $0.16 cents and $0.18 cents per mile. To charge the iPACE from 10% to 80% state of charge on Electrify America's network will cost you somewhere around $26.52 or up to $31.36 at the more expensive states. This is an average of 16 to 19 cents per mile. If you look at the same numbers for the UK, it'll cost you a little over 12 pounds to charge your Tesla Model Y from 10% to 80% state of charge. To achieve that same 10% to 80% state of charge on the Tesla Model Y when connected to the iAudity network, it would cost you 35 plus pounds to do that. The e-tron could cost almost 46 pounds to achieve an 80% state of charge, and the iPACE could cost somewhere around 43 pounds to achieve an 80% state of charge as well. And then lastly, to talk about the charging costs for Europe, since the European Tesla supercharger prices vary from actual country to country, we're going to be comparing the most expensive country, which is Germany, and Tesla charges 33 euro cents per kilowatt hour in Germany for their supercharging stations, and that would end up costing around 17 euros for the Model Y, or on the Ionity network, almost 41 euros. The e-tron would cost over 52 euros, and the iPACE would cost almost 50 euros. So as you can see from these numbers, the Tesla supercharging network is considerably less expensive than Ionity and a decent amount cheaper than Electrify America as well. Now all the rates that I mentioned for Ionity and also Electrify America are if you don't have a plan with them. Electrify America and Ionity both offer membership plans where you can get a little bit discounted rates if you pay per month. According to an Inside EVs article, Audi owners are able to pay a membership fee of around 18 euros per month and get discounted charging rates. And if they charge on the high powered chargers, they can get rates as low as 31 cents per kilowatt hour. Electrify America also has a membership program that gives you a discount as well, and they call this Pass Plus. As you can see from this chart from their website, if you pay the $4 monthly fee, that waives the $1 session fee, and you get discounted rates per minute. But even with these memberships and these discounts, in most cases, the Tesla network is still going to be cheaper. And of course, as we've talked about, there are more locations for you to connect to. The last thing I want to talk about as we wrap up this video comparison is how convenient is it to pay for your charging sessions at each one of these networks. When it comes to Tesla supercharging network, you don't need to have a special card or a special membership, but simply by being an owner, you put a credit card on file, and when you connect your Tesla to the supercharger, it knows who you are, and Tesla will automatically bill you. This makes it really easy and convenient because you can just pull up to a Tesla supercharger, plug in, and be on your way. For a charging network like Ionity and Electrify America, you either have to have an app and a membership through that, or you have a card, or you can pay through credit card. It's definitely not as convenient as Tesla's network. So here's how these networks compare based on these key metrics. When it comes to the availability and number of chargers, Tesla wins that contest hands down over Electrify America and Ionity. Technically, when it comes to charging power, Ionity takes the win because they have the largest amount of chargers at 350 kilowatt charging power. But Tesla wins by far on charging cost and on charging convenience. So in the end, I'm glad that Electrify America and Ionity exist because we need more charging networks in the world so that more people can actually have confidence to buy an electric vehicle. But with all this data, it's clear to see that Tesla has really built a great network and I believe this is one of the reasons why Tesla's vehicles sell so well. Based on different comments I've seen on social media, on my videos and polls that I've seen, one of the big factors why people buy a Tesla is because of the charging network. It's very convenient, it's relatively inexpensive, and it's there for you when you need it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. 
Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking the like button so other people can find the video. And I also here wanted to thank the Patreons which support this channel and help me make this content. And if you'd like to find out more about supporting this channel and becoming a Patreon, you can check out the link that I'll put in the description below. Thank you so much.